That's it. There. There. How's that look? We, do we look good? Can they see us? Can they see us? I feel like I feel like I'm not as in the frame as you are. I feel like you're taking over the shot. I mean, who's the star here? All right, scoot over, scoot over. That's, now you've made it worse. Now they can't see my face at all. All right. Are, are we, as much as I love your kisses, Riot. Come here, get, get down off the table. All right, take 38. Okay, this is a good spot for you. This is, this is a good spot. As long as nobody walks by and you lose your shit, we should be fine. Well, yeah, he's a good boy. Okay. Oh, good. Hello YouTube family, it's me, Malligator Mom, and today the video is going to be five things that you should know before you get your Belgian Malinois. Number one, Belgian Malinois are an extremely energetic breed, so you need to be prepared up front for that time commitment. Now, that means typically that you should expect to spend a couple hours a day on mental and physical exercise for your Malinois. So as an example, uh, my pups get out three to four times a day, and that's about the minimum that I shoot for. And those could be um, just, you know, sessions of fetch or maybe some obedience, um, something like that. So you can expect to spend, you know, like a minimum of two to three hours a day, depending on your dog and uh, their level of drive, um, that they're gonna need to expel all of that energy. I also spend two to three hours a week with a professional trainer, and I do that consistently. Um, I do that to not only maintain the level of training that we've achieved, but also to progress into new areas of training as well. So, you know, on top of just their everyday needs, I'm also spending that extra two to three hours a week with a professional trainer. Now, this isn't to say that a Malinois can't be settled in the home. Um, I have three Belgian Malinois and we work very diligently on their behavior inside the home. Uh, they all do have a pretty nice off switch, still working on that with our puppy Storm. Um, but that just comes down to setting very clear um, and consistent, consistency is the key, boundaries within the home for what is acceptable behavior. But the Malinois is kind of extra, right? So even two years later, I am still having to remind Riot that he cannot jump on my dining room table and take a nap. Um, so that's the kind of stuff I'm talking about. These, these aren't your typical dogs in that way. You probably don't have to tell many other dogs or dog breeds um, that it's not acceptable to jump on the dining room table. So that's the kind of stuff you need to be diligent and consistent and work on. And these are just some of the challenges that make this breed very unique. So one thing to keep in mind is that a bored Malinois can be a very destructive and naughty dog. And that's not his fault, that's your fault. All right, so moving on to number two. The Belgian Malinois is not an inexpensive dog um, to acquire or to keep. So um, you can expect to spend a little bit more than your average dog breed when you acquire a Malinois. You need to be prepared financially to keep up with their needs. So a Belgian Malinois is going to require, um, you know, a, a little higher quality of um, everything when it comes to a higher, you need to, to feed your Malinois a higher quality food, for example, because, um, you know, they are so energetic and they, they do so much exercise and, and physical exertion that you need to be feeding them a high quality food. You cannot feed your Belgian Malinois Old Roy from Walmart and expect him to 
um, you know, be a very happy or fulfilled dog, you're probably going to run into some problems. So, you know, all of these things need to be taken into consideration. Um, you know, the Malinois is also known for being a little bit of an escape artist. Um, so, you know, I've seen Malinois chew right through wire crates or plastic crates. So, you know, again, this just kind of like bumps you up into a whole nother tier of pet requirements and products because um, a higher quality food is going to cost more money. Higher quality crates are going to cost more money. Um, you're gonna need to be prepared for that. You may also experience more frequent vet visits. So you might be spending more money going to the vet with a Malinois than you would with you know, a, a lazier um, dog breed because their goofy energy can really expel itself in the most um, ridiculous ways and they can injure themselves um, just because of their drive and their tenacity. Lots of times, you know, they'll just run right through something or whatever and they'll end up getting hurt. So you need to be prepared to deal with that. You also need to be prepared to spend money with a professional trainer. And in fact, this is probably the number one most important thing that you can do um, and that you should consider when you are thinking about getting a Belgian Malinois. You need to be ready and financially prepared, have some money set aside um, or saved up to work with a professional trainer. Um, you know, I get the question all the time, how on earth have you been able to successfully incorporate three Belgian Malinois into um, a family with four children and, and all of that? And the answer is very, very simple. If I wasn't working with a professional trainer in the capacity that I do, I really do not believe that I have, I would have been armed with the skills necessary to make that possible. So make sure that you understand upfront before you get a Belgian Malinois be prepared to spend money on a professional trainer. Um, if you don't, you'll be doing yourself a huge misservice and the dog. So lots of times people will get a Malinois and they'll think to themselves, oh, you know, I'll just watch some YouTube videos, um, you know, maybe go to Learberg.com. And, and those things are great and it's fantastic that we have um, that technology and the ability to tap into those types of things. And those videos and those courses definitely do serve a purpose. But when it comes to, especially first time Malinois owners, I highly, highly suggest that you have money set aside um, to invest in a professional trainer. And that is not going to be very cheap. So, um, you know, a professional trainer that specializes in Malinois and any type of work or, or sport or hobby that they do is gonna run you on average, you know, between 80 to $120 an hour. So uh, if you're doing that, you know, once or twice or even three times a week, that's gonna add up pretty quickly. And that's what having and maintaining this type of breed costs. So keep in mind, the Belgian Malinois, if you want a very highly trained elite Belgian Malinois like you see on YouTube, that does not come without a hefty price tag. People are spending tons and tons and tons of money and tons and tons and tons of time to get them to that level. So if that's what you're after, um, if that's what the big appeal has been for you with the Belgian Malinois, then, you know, upfront and honest, you, you need to be prepared um, to have a pretty hefty pocketbook to get your dog to that level. You ready to tell them about number three? Huh? Because this is a prime example right here. Number three, um, Malinois are people dogs. So if you don't have the time um, to have a dog who is a people dog by your side, then this might not be the right breed for you. So um, the best example I can think of is, you know, if I'm gonna go run errands or if I'm gonna go put ga uh, gas in the car or something like that, my Malinois would be much, much happier to come with me and wait in the car than to be put up in a crate while I go and, and, and live my life and do things I have to do day to day. They want to be involved. They wanna be involved in everything you're doing. They want to be involved in family activities. If you, um, you know, are having a family barbecue, they want to be involved in all of that. So, you know, a Belgian Malinois, unless you have, um, well, unless you wanna set boundaries right away, uh, you'll probably never use the bathroom alone. You'll probably never shower alone. You probably will never have 
any of that me time that we all talk about because this is the type of dog that really is not going to leave your side. They are people dogs. So um, they bond very quickly to their families. They're very loyal and loving companions. Um, and so, you know, for that reason, if you are someone who is just going to, you know, stick your dog in a crate because you work 10 hour days and you might have 20 minutes in the morning and another 20 minutes at night to spend with your Malinois, this is just not the right dog for you. Um, that Malinois is not going to be a very happy or fulfilled Malinois because, you know, again, these are people dogs. They really do want to be a part of everything that you're doing every minute of the day. All right, moving on to number four. One of the things that I tell everybody um, if they're considering getting a Malinois is to be prepared for your Belgian Malinois to pretty much take over your life. But don't worry, not in a bad way. These dogs are such smart and amazing companions that you'll really find yourself changing your complete uh, lifestyle to keep up with them. So, you know, unless you're prepared for that, if it's not maybe the right time in your life, um, you know, that's okay. Maybe consider a Malinois down the road. So while I do have four children, my youngest was five when I brought home my first Malinois. Um, so, you know, is having young children and having a Malinois possible? Um, yes. Would I do it with a child younger than the age of five? I'm going to be upfront and honest here and tell you, no. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have a baby. I wouldn't have a toddler. Um, you know, I, I just wouldn't have that and have a Belgian Malinois. You know, again, is it possible? Sure, I suppose it's possible. Would I do it knowing everything I know and being exposed to everything I've been exposed to with Belgian Malinois in the last several years? No, I wouldn't do it. And some of you might not want to hear that in today's video, but I think that honesty and transparency here is, um, you know, going to serve everybody better in the long run, your family and your potential dog. It just might not be the right time for your family if you have young children to bring a Malinois into the picture. So, you know, um, it's, it's basically like a Malinois requires the same attention as a toddler, only this toddler has, you know, claws and teeth. And lastly, number five, make sure that you do your research when it comes to the breeder. Um, you know, a nicely bred whelped Malinois is going to run you around $2,500 or more. I would be suspect uh, of any Malinois breeder who's selling for less than around $1,500. So um, be prepared to spend a little bit of money up front on your puppy. Again, this is not an inexpensive breed. So make sure you research your breeder and connect with a breeder who is breeding for the specific traits and temperament that you want to incorporate into your family. Now, there are breeders out there who are breeding for all different kinds of traits, all different levels of drive, all different types of jobs and purposes for these dogs. So you might not want to go to a breeder who is breeding for a really high drive Malinois. These Malinois are really only meant for work. Maybe they're just meant for um, you know, police work or military work, or they are breeding for dogs to perform at a very high level in sports, um, that kind of thing. Now, this is the type of dog who is a true working dog who's never really going to need to have that off switch or that temperament to be able to come in and calm down in a home or be around children. So, um, you know, just keep that in mind. Make sure you research a breeder who is um, going to be breeding for the right traits and temperament. And so just be honest with the breeder. Reach out to them, contact them. Um, don't put a deposit down with the first breeder you talk to. And if that breeder is trying to push you to do that, don't do it, move on. Um, it should take you several weeks, honestly, to do your due diligence, find a breeder who's breeding for the right traits and the right temperament. And um, you know, at that point, just be honest with the breeder, tell them what it is you're looking for, tell them what purpose, um, this Malinois is going to serve, you know, are you looking to do detection work maybe, you know, as a hobby? Do you want this dog as a family protection dog? Are you wanting to train in that? Um, you know, all of that kind of information should be exchanged with the breeder and the breeder should be able to connect you with the right dog. So again, just make sure that you're doing your research on the breeder and um, if any of you would like help uh, getting that process started, 
and reaching out to some breeders that I have personally worked with that I know and trust, I am happy to connect you. Just um, hit me up on my website, shoot me an email there. My website is malligatormom.com. I'll put that right here across the screen for you. Um, but that's it for today, guys. This has been five things that you should consider if um, you are getting a Belgian Malinois. So thanks for watching today, you guys. Um, as always, make sure that you hit the subscribe button, ring the bell for notifications, and I will see you guys next week.